everybody, I'm Cinnamon Cooney, your art sharp, and today I'd like to show you how you can paint these two whales in front of this gorgeous fantasy tropical ocean scene. Step by step, I'm going to explain to you the process. I'm going to tell you the materials I'm using. You're going to see every part of this in real time so you can paint this yourself at home. On the mic is my husband, John. Hey, guys. He is going to be helping me get this lesson out by making sure we switch cameras, that you can see the palettes, you can see every mix. You can see up close on the canvas for every brush stroke technique. This is a really fun painting. We do call it a three hoot. So among our beginner paintings, there's a lot more techniques and layers on this than you might see in a one hoot. However, what I would say is that it's really fun. It was easier than we expected. I think that was an interesting that came from this because we thought it was going to be a lot more challenging than it was. You'd want to be able to dry brush, uh, blend a little bit, splatter a little bit. But if you've been doing some tutorials and you're ready for something like this, I think jump on in. And even if you're very new, I highly recommend you watch it to understand how something like this is put together. Because no matter where you are on your art adventure, you're going to find something in lessons like this that help you unlock different parts of your art brain. Check that description below because there's a link to our website. And on the website is the reference image for you to print out so that you can paint along. There's also a traceable. I freehand these wheels in, but maybe you don't like to draw. It's there for you so you can just transfer that onto the canvas and still get the whale shapes that you're really, really going to like. There's paint exchanges if you don't have an exact color that I have and a couple suggestions of other videos you might like. So tons of resources for you for there. All free, right, John? Yeah, all free. Because we roll like that. It's all going to be acrylic paint. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So get your paint, get your brushes. Come back and meet me at the easel right, right now. I'm going to show you some cool ways that you can accomplish this gorgeous piece. So let's jump right on into our project and talk about our strategies and our materials that are going to help us succeed at this really gorgeous painting. All right, I'm going to turn it around. Boom, I love my turning around. So I have my 11 by 14 surface here. I've chosen to do a panel not because it's better than a stretch canvas or curly paper but simply because I paint a whole lot and storage is an issue for me and it's a perfectly fine surface. Sometimes they can be more economical than other surfaces. So it's something to think about. Well, we like to put wishes and intentions on our surface. So of course today, we're just wishing a happy Father's Day to all dads everywhere, especially the father in my life. Dad Hands has been a real great dad. Thank you, babe. Well, thank you very much. So we had a little bit of a weather today and this is a little different than what we normally do just because, you know, Cameras and equipment and stuff uh, don't really love power surges. It's not their favorite. So well, we're going to keep going and hop on into the paint. All right. Now, I have out some phthalo blue, phthalo green, had red medium, quinacridone magenta, alizarin crimson, doxazine purple, had yellow medium, Mars black, titanium white. And to the side, I have a tube of tinned white. Another way that, that you might see this referred to as zinc white or mixing white. But what it basically is is a very transparent white that doesn't essentially change the color the way that titanium white is. So it lightens it, but it doesn't change its nature. And that's kind of nice to have around, especially when you're doing these sort of fun, moody, atmospheric pieces. Now I'm going to switch my coffee with my water because I don't want to put my paint in my coffee mug. I got my coffee too. <laughs> That'll happen. So we're going to have a whale of a Father's Day. Dad jokes. Dad jokes. Well, really? It's a, it's a father-son whale jump. <laughs> I'm going to take, this is a one-inch cutter. It's a hog bristle with a synthetic mix in it. I'm going to go ahead and get it just a smidge wet. Just a smidgey smidge wet. And I'll go ahead and blend in this little bit of intention for our dads out there that we can really, really work our, our sky quite well. And this also helps my brush get to its ideal wetness because you want to get them wet, but you don't want them to be too wet because they really, really, really soften when you do. Now, the first layer that I'm going to do, let me get a little bit of moisture on my surface. Sometimes the art panels are thirsty. The way some people are thirsty for gossip, these art panels get thirsty for the paint. So I'm putting just a small amount of moisture on here. If you put too much, they're going to bow or bend, especially if they're like not an ampersand or not a high end panel. You don't want to soak them. This is a very minor thing that we're doing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to load up, as you can see, just on the tips of my bristles, a little bit of my white 
and a little bit of my yellow. If you need a little more paint, you can get it. A little more water, a little more paint. And I'm just going to begin with this light value right here. You can see that right there? Very light value. Brushing that back and forth. Okay, getting a nice light value to start with. I'm going to go ahead and get a little more white into this. And I'm going to make sure that that's a little more applied right there in the center space. Get a little more yellow. Very softly work this in, kind of building up the color that I'm going to get to talk about, which is always my favorite. They're always good things. Good stuff, babe. Yeah. Yeah? I love the sunset on this one. I really do, too. And we're going to have some fun doing it. I know that I... We often get questions, and I'm just thinking, like, why did you paint so much yellow in there if there's only just a little tiny bit in the middle? Well, I'm going to be working it back, as you can see, and I want to be able to get the reds and things in there. So I'm going to go ahead and get my red and my magenta together. And I'm going to start blending that in right here while everything's still wet. You can see that goes kind of a rose, doesn't it? So that's the cad red and the magenta, working that in. And I'm going to definitely pull this down. Our horizon line is right about here. So I'm going to blend this in and see how when I do that, they're very soft mm -hmm. together. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to rinse out this brush quite a lot. And I like to get a second brush that's dry because it makes a very nice blending brush. So I'm going to go ahead. I have, um, these are ultimate varnish brushes, but what you're talking about is kind of a mop shaped brush. I like synthetic. Look at this. We're going to just blend these two surfaces softly together, creating kind of a nice atmospheric space. And this only works because everything is still wet. My brush is very soft. As you can see, and it's letting me really, really soften the focus on this horizon. Look at that. Now, if you get too much pigment, you can always wipe it off onto a towel. See how I'm being very vigorous? And come back and soften again. Pretty terrific way to get almost an oil technique. Sometimes the oil artists, um, you know, are given the reputation of being the only ones that can do a very soft focus. But actually, I have found that acrylic artists with the right kind of planning can do it fairly easily, too. I'm taking a one-to-one -one mix of my phthalo blue and phthalo green. And I'm going to bring a blend down. I'm going to paint these to the top. And then I'm going to blend this up here down into this down there. So here's that two-inch brush. It needs to be moist, but I don't want it to be wet because if it were wet, it's going to foam up the paint. I'm going to take a little bit of this turquoise, which now you can see it's just a gorgeous color, isn't it? We're going to come up at the top. And I'm going to start to pull this into play up here. And a little bit into this right here. So see how it's overlaying? Yeah. Right there between those two. I'll rinse that out and lay that to the side. And then I'm going to blend that top to that base. <sighs> so you're using a super fluffy, fluffy brush. I am using this very soft synthetic brush. Now, a lot of people like to use goat. And I have some beautiful goat mops. A lot of people like to use uh, hockey brushes uh, for this type of blending, which I have. But I like synthetics, and here's why. I'm going to get this just a little bit moist and take off the extra water for this part so it'll help blend between these two spots. See how it's doing? Just a little bit right here. It was just a little bit dry. And I need to make sure that we have super soft transitions. Very soft transitions. Um, but acrylic's really hard on natural. Uh, so sometimes it's nice to have a synthetic, but there's not a lot of synthetics 
that are as soft as like maybe a hog brush. I mean, as soft as a goat brush. So it's nice to um, find a good one. If you do, you kind of lean into it. My pressure is super light and you can see I'm just being very mellow about how I'm working in here. I'm going to go ahead and put a little more paint. It's a very dry brush, yeah. Up top. Yeah, I don't let a lot of water get into it. I'm going to get a little, I'm even mixing it right here on my brush. See, I'm taking the green and the blue. Mm -hmm. And I'm adding that next layer of, of depth because there's some, there's some depth up here. There we go. That's quite nice. See how we can get our blends going down. So make sure I'm not carrying a lot going on there. Still quite soft. Now and you're going to just very softly, right, I'm dusting. Um, just such a, it's almost like cleaning dinosaur bones. It's super delicate work. And we're just going to make a nice little transition. It's okay if some of our blue comes down here, because that's nice. Bring some of that down here. And you can see that each area now is just distant and soft. There we go. Getting some beautiful effects between those two spaces. Now the next thing that I think I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to take a little of my quinacridone and a small amount of my alizarin together. And I've got them on this brush. And I'm going to just bring them over. And I'm going to start putting in these very soft, very magical little cloud shape. And you can see that the brush is making these little rough edges, isn't it? And where these colors go over the aqua, that glaze becomes that wonderful purple. Yeah, it makes that crazy color. Isn't that wonderful? So that's a lot of why you put the mm -hmm. so much of that color underneath. Now, if I need to, I get the smallest amount of water into the brush, like if it's getting dry, but I really, like, you can almost see, like, it's like, boy, do I just barely touch it in there. Right, right. yeah. I'm going to just keep taking this. And the nature of the brush being so soft is really helpful. The other thing that's nice about synthetics is they don't drop as many hairs into your canvas, which can be really frustrating. I'm bringing some of this value down. Let's come over here and maybe wiggle back and forth as you do. I'm wiggling back and forth. Just getting that nice blend as we go through here. See how we're doing? And I'm bringing it down. Now if I need to come over on this side, and I'm still just lightly touching my brush here. See how light that touches? And then I'm going to soften it. Look, we're softening it. I just wiped into my towel, so I have less pigment, and I'm still lightly working it. Any soft brush that you have. Um, I've seen people do a good, good makeup brush here. I don't judge. Whatever tool gets you through the effect is what mm -hmm. I say. You've got a tool that gives you the effect, go with that tool. That's always a good idea. Now, as I come down, I think I'm going to pull out a little bit of my Doc's Purple and quite a lot of my Quinacridone. And it's going to make a brighter purple, and I'm going to get the smidgiest smidge of my white into that. I'm going to come along here, right at my horizon line. Mentally, I'm going to come in in a little bit and make a hard line. But right now, I just want to make sure that I've got this going here a little bit. There we go. Aren't those purples nice? A little white into it. If you need a little bit of water, get a little water. But again, don't get that brush like soaking wet. Mm 
And I'm making sure that my edges, everything that I've got here is fairly light. Let's put some little purples up here. See how I'm wiggling the brush? I'm letting the brush do the work of making some, some weird and distant cloud shapes. And they are, aren't they? How you doing, babe? Good. To add a Good. little more white is coming forward. I definitely, definitely would want more white into this. I'm tracking you with cameras. You're tracking me? There we go. See how that's very light, almost a lavender? And I'm wiggling. Maybe. I like sometimes to turn a brush on its corner. Because it gives me some interesting natural looking little shapes, doesn't it? And I'll pull some of those up into a couple places up here. Let's add a few. Rinsing out quite well. See, we're starting to get some of that drama going, aren't we? Yeah. I'm going to rinse out very well, take out all the extra water, and I'm going to just dust over all of this while it's still a little wet so I can blend just a little bit. When acrylic paint is dry, then it's dry. It doesn't uh, reactivate in the same way that maybe, you know, a watercolor will. Hmm. So it's nice if you can get in there during it's, those little stages while it's still a little wet. It's crazy. I've just how added they... a little white to that. And I'm going to layer up this sky. I'm going to add a little dust right there. Because you want to bring colors around. Bring some of that color right there. Little more pink into that. And see, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Let's put a little wiggle of that color right here, too. Different little cloud shapes are happening. Take a deep breath. Relax yourself. Skies can give people a lot of stress. Let's load up a little bit of our blue. And it's okay if you get a little of your dioxin purple so it's quite dark. And we're going to come here and go right over that. See how we're doing? And add some of that dimensionality to the sky. Some dark shape. See wiggling? Look at how my brush is just kind of crazy. A lot of times when people have a crazy brush or a brush gets crazy, they don't go, oh, that's wonderful. Sometimes they're like, oh, no, what will happen? And I'm like, clouds and crazy effects will happen. Mm. Let's find out. I'm going to come over here. and Just enjoy my sky so much. Maybe a little bit right here. Rinse out quite well. Got a lot happening all of a sudden, don't we? Just out of the blue. It not a lot going on. I, I love have how to, the skies. Huh? I love how these skies just appear <laughs> together. I'm gonna dry this real quick. And while she's drying, I'll remind you: use your heat mover or your air mover on the lowest heat setting because heat can cause color shift and induce. Um, shrinkage and soften the paint and things like that. So make sure you don't use any heat and that's just a good little public service announcement. Also, if you uh, make sure it's thoroughly dry between layers, that way you're not picking up any uh, other colors. Now, while that's a little bit dry, I'm going to do a cool thing. I'm going to get some of my fluid acrylic paint. Right. I'm going to squeeze a little of it out. And I have a splattering tool here. This is actually a brush. It looks like a toothbrush, but it's actually a brush. Um, I've seen people use stiff toothbrushes. I've got a video on different ways that you can make stars. There's a lot of ways to do this. There's not a right or wrong way, but there's the right way for you. Here's my tip to prevent all of your future misery and crying. Test your splatter on a piece of scratch paper before putting it on your canvas that you finally worked out your pretty loose sky on. 
Now we're going to star at this stage because we still have some clouds and some things to put there and we want the stars to feel distant. I'm going to very lightly flick it. I'm going to try to keep them sort of focused to the top of the canvas where we would see them in the darker blue area. That's, that's one of the reasons why I like a tool like this is it really gives me a lot of control. You're fast with it. Yeah, and it's quick and you get this nice, wonderful, very organic splattering with big and small particulates, which make it feel a little bit like stars. And that's kind of nice, right? We see those and we're like, oh, it's a little starry. It's a little good. And that way, as we come in and paint these little detail clouds here and maybe some of our stuff, like our moon and things, it's going to look pretty good. Now I'm going to dry this a little bit. Okay. So there it goes. Yeah. And uh, again, she's drying that so that as she adds these next layers of clouds and things, it doesn't pick up the little white spots and then create funky little smears. So because you want your dots to be nice, tight little stars in the sky, not little smeary things that... Too bad. There we go. And Do I'm going to use uh, washi tape, I think. Washi tape? Yeah. It's... um. An alternative to artist tape. <laughs> the good stuff. I, I like the recollections one. Um, but basically, it's this really pretty tape that crafters use. That's how I found out about it. I'm going to put this right here. I, I'm going to use my T-square to make sure that my horizon line be level. I'm going to come right here just for a second. Down to where my purple sort of disappearing. Where I felt like my horizon line would, is going to be. And I'm going to give myself just a bit of a guideline using a charcoal pencil. You could use kids chalk. Just anything that's not going to really mar your paint permanently. Watercolor pencil, lots of options. But this will help me make sure that my horizon line is as level as it needs to be for the water down below. We're going to do some nice water effects while we're letting the sky have a rest and a think about what it's done. Mm. <sighs> How are you doing today, babe? Um, just pondering. Pondering. This apex intelligent predator can leap, I don't know, eight to ten feet out of the water. With friends. With friends. It's in cute a to us, not way. cute to seals or penguins. Like it's so funny, like I think about that a lot, like how seals and penguins feel about killer whales. Yeah. Orcas versus how like tourists feel about orcas. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a very different feeling. I do, I truly do. <laughs> so the water is quite light up front and quite dark in the back. And the easiest way for me to get to that really is to turn my surface upside down so I have nice access to it. If I could suggest something for you at home as you're painting, even if you're an experienced painter, is be mindful of the positioning of your body, your comfort, and where you're carrying your tension. If you think of it, it's a good time to take a deep breath. Let it out. Doing that during a painting yeah. actually helps you through each stage. I know it sounds goofy, but it is effective. I'm going to dip that first brush that I had in water again. That's that little one inch brush. You could use just any brush you have that covers a nice amount of surface. You don't have to have my exact brushes. I like to tell you the tools that I'm using. I'm just loading up with my darkest, darkest, darkest look. I like to tell you the tools that I'm using so that there's no mystery to each effect and result. But please don't let that be an illusion that it has to be that tool, that one tool. There's very few things that are like that in art. There's usually like several tools, several techniques, several ways into something. Now I'm going to get a little bit of my yellow on this. I'm over here and mix it. You can see it takes it much more green. And then I'm going to get a little bit of white. Yeah. And I'm going to come up front. That's nice. And make sure that this lighter color, much lighter color is going on. Yeah, we've got going. And then I'm going to get even a lot more lighter color. All right. Boom, boom. And I'm going to put that right here. Do that in the front. Rinse it out. And let's do a little blending here too. Let's do a little soft blending. 
The reason I tell you all the time about rinsing out your brush and, uh, you know, putting it out is just to help you keep your brushes alive longer. It's just a gentle prompt, a little gentle nudge to remember that brush care really, really impacts the life of your brushes and is one of those places that actually can save you a lot of money in not having to replace your tools. So you can afford maybe a nicer brush because you're not hurting the brush that you have. Now I'm going to get a little of my purple and I'm going to get it over into my blue and I'm going to come here in the back and I'm going to use this brush, my soft brush that gives me such, look how soft those lines are. So what are you looking for in a brush like this? You want a very soft, normally in acrylic brushes, I'll say it's too stiff to put on makeup. A blending brush should feel like it could put makeup on your face. If you're a guy, what would that be, John? What soft brushes do you guys use in the use in life? Hmm. Maybe uh, like if you've ever used a lathering brush for when you shave. Lathering brush would be a great one. So go ahead, put me on the spot again. Uh, no, I wasn't trying to. Put <laughs> So can you see that? I love this little blend of I do. colors. I see it. It's going to be so pretty. I'm not going to worry about uh, so much. Uh... Ooh, you peeled it off. I made a peely sound. See? And, and now didn't... I have a nice horizon line that I have to fight for. And it didn't take the paint with it. Didn't take the paint with it. Low tack tape. Low tack tape. Low tack tape is so tacky. All right. So now we have the beginnings of some stuff on the sky. I know that I've got some whales that are coming up. I know I've got a moon here. So I'm going to make some general uh, notes. That way I don't spend too much time, as one might, um, doing details like hardcore details, getting fiddly and dramatic and expressive where I'm going to paint right over it. Not that I have never done that. I know I've been on the show too. I'm just saying today we're going to think about it a little bit. <laughs> So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to think about the leap that my whales are taking. I'm again use this chalk tool, see, and I'm going to car. I'm going to just very lightly sketch their shape. So it's just a little arc, and then we have this nice little pointed nose, and that's going to come back. And then we have a little friend here with another little pointed nose that's going to come back. And they have little tails, and they have some tails that sort of come down into this space here. Now, I'll do some very detailed sketches in paint in a minute with these guys. But the reason I want to know where that is, is I don't want to put maybe the greatest amount of focus that I have where they're going to be, right? And then I'm going to come here and say, all right, let's put a big almost, what, a moon of Endor kind of big hmm. booty right here. I'm going to make a little half circle. I like how you pivot your hand to make that kind of. It is a little trick. <laughs> I could also like get an empty cup and trace, but all my cups right now are full of water. So I know some things. I know I've got a little moon happening here. I've got my little orcas happening here. So when I get into, say, a scruffly brush, and you guys know I love my scruffly brushes, this is a number eight Cambridge, and we use them all acrylic April. I think a brush like that is good to have in your paint box. You don't have to have every brush in your paint box, so I highly encourage it, um, as long as it's within budget. But it's a nice one to have. Um, it's stiff and it's mixed with boar hair and synthetic filaments. So it's really robust for acrylic paint. I'm going to get this wet. I'm going to change my water to clean water. See how it's sort of dirty now? Hmm. Yeah. yeah. So that's a little bit too much of those colors in there. And I want cleaner, brighter colors. I'm going to take a minute, maybe put out some more blue. Because I know I'm going to want it. And I may also at this time put out some of my uh tinting white from this line zinc or mixing white whichever that you have right kind of a cool thing all the time there we go and i'm gonna have a little bit of fun making some drama mm. so, but the first drama i'm gonna do is i'm gonna be real nice and i'm gonna get some blue and some just traditional white see those two and i'm gonna come here with my scruffly little brush and just come on inside my little guides that I have and make 
my completely impossible moon. I'm going to take these stars out here, guys. Don't worry. <laughs> That's one of the things that we've got to do is, unless this moon has been exploded, which it hasn't in my story. No. No. This is, the empire this, has not come by and blown up my moon. Well, that's because you're in the young universe. You're in the wrong universe. This has whales. It's clearly Star Trek. All right. I'm happy to be in the Star Trek universe. <laughs> I like to work when I'm doing these sort of organic shapes, the corner of my brush. You can see that. Look at the corner of that brush. So fun. Little corner. Got some white on here. Making those little moon craters. So some's dark, some's light. Isn't that fun? Fun for me. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> Hopefully it's fun for you. you. Come along here. I'm going to make this little edge here just a bit lighter. Right, as they do. And we're starting to see that. I'll let that have a minute. And maybe I'll erase my little chalk here and kind of erase that. See how, like, I had some paint there I didn't love and I just erased it? I was able to do that because the paint was essentially dry. Got a little more paint on this brush. And I'm just making sure that this edge is white and has a nice little contrast into it. And then I'm going to break up the line of it using my brush. We'll get back into that in a second. Let's take uh, some of our purple and some of our blue. And I'm going to really talk about maybe some of these stronger clouds. You see me sort of wiggling them. And what am I doing? I'm taking out the stars where we're trying to imply that maybe some cloud cover is here. If that makes sense. And while I've got this dark color, I want to take advantage of my dark colors. I'm going to come a couple places and, and do a couple things. Come here and add a little. What is that? Here. A little cloudness? Yeah, just I'm coming around and I'm making these shapes. More thoughtful. Not trying to. This is what I would call definitely deep in magical realism again. This isn't really a sky that you would generally find on the planet. Now I might take a little bit of my purple and my magenta. I'm going to get some of my zinc now. See that bright color? Start to come here and make some of the lighter little tonalities. Wiping off my extra pigment. I'm going to get a lot more of my zinc. I'm just making sure this light bit of cloud cover is starting to pull up. Get back a little bit, see where I'm going. I'm going to zoom in there because I really like how those brush strokes are kind of... I'm getting my stronger titanium white. You're leaving it a little mixy-mixy on the brush. Yeah. I'm under here. Make sure that I'm there we go. Look at that. That's fun. Get some stuff there. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Rinsing out thoroughly. Thoroughly swish the brush. Thoroughly swish the brush. I really like this green and aqua. I don't want to work that too much more. There's some stuff I want to do here, and I definitely want to work the area where I've got my sun. So I'm going to take a little of my pad yellow, and I'm going to take some of my zinc. And you'll notice, unlike when I add titanium white to it, it still keeps it quite yellow. It's 
just lightens it a shade. And I'm wiggling back and forth, if you guys can see that. And I'm trying to make very random, unexpected little shapes in this part of this dramatic sky. Because the sky is nothing if not the drama. All right, so that's quite good. Get a little bit of our red into our yellow. So that's our cad red into our yellow. It's going to make kind of an interesting muted orange. So we can come in here and maybe work some of that orange in. Whenever I'm working orange against a purple and a bunch of pinks, and then you add aqua to it, oh, it's such a pretty color story. Isn't it? Yeah, it really is. So just touching the brush, dancing it around. Dance, dance. Dance it with the brush. I, I like how that just, I'm trying to be able to co both come in close so you can see how those brush strokes just layer in there. And also as they come in, they just sort of fill the sky in so nicely. It's amazing. I'm going to get a little of my uh, titanium white for a second. And I'm going to come right in here. I'm going to just make a little hot spot. Little spot of very light value. Just a little focus there. Now I want to take a smidge of my Doc's purple and quite a lot of my magenta and some of my white. I'm making some of that lavender. It's so nice down here. And I will add some of that back and forth little majesty. These are going to be peeking up, I imagine, from the palm fronds that are back there. Just enjoying my sky. Some days it's fun to paint a really dynamic, crazy sky. How's your crazy sky? This is a painting that one does not invite the extended family into the studio. Mm. I'm going to go ahead and get some alizarin crimson into this mix because it's going to deepen it, as you can see. Maybe a little more magenta. Put some of that in there. Some of those deeper values. Look at that. Because they're going to be like, I don't know, I've never seen no sky like that. It is a crazy sky. Well, it's your sky. I like it. Soft, 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 soft. Maybe a little more purple. Maybe a little more purple. I'm feeling pretty good about this. How are you guys feeling? I like it. Push a little cloud up. See, I'm pushing off the corner. Yeah. And I'm making a little bit of a bank here. A little shape. Back and forth, lining the edge, but I got that nice little push. Shape comes forward here, too. Corner, 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 corner. It's just like a, it just kind of implies that distant, almost maybe could be a bank of clouds. Now, fun. Get some magenta and some zinc. See how bright it is? Mm-hmm. Wiggling that brush. And then where, wherever I find an edge, I just pull it out. What's dramatic? Pink is dramatic. Look at that pink into that purple cloud right there. 
A little more pink. Some of that over here. You know, it would need a little more pink than that. That was a little too zinky. But I don't I don't I don't freak out about it. I just blend it in. The trick here is is to play. I'm gonna push some of this up. Maybe a little more of that up. Play, but don't take out the parts that you like. I feel like that's getting pretty awesome sauce. And there's just one last kind of color value I can get in there. And that is a little of the cad red kind of toned back with the magenta. Let's put some of that drama through here. Weave it in. Weave it in. Weave it in. You got drama. <laughs> Back towards the light. Let the brush. Let the brush do the work. I'm not working behind where I know I've got my whales too much because it would be lost. I can really enjoy what I've got here. <laughs> now, one last thing just to make it look kind of awesomeness, right? Mm -hmm. Do you want to take a cleaner brush? That means a brush that's going to give me a nicer edge. Uh, this is a number six ruby satin. I'm going to go ahead and load up a little bit of my titanium white, as you do see here. Right. And I'm going to come along the edge. And I'm going to softly using the corner of my brush work some of that i don't want that to be a hard line right so i'm just letting the brush softly break up that hard edge but just just for what we're doing we need a little bit of contrast and i'll softly blend it back here and add a couple hot spots look at that so now that's got a nice little clean finish. If you need to, get your brush wet and wipe off the paint. And before this dries, you can come in and soften it. Yeah, we're softening it. Only works, though, if the, br the paint isn't dry and the brush isn't wet. Now I'm going to take my black. Boom, boom, boom. And I'm going to just sketch in my killer whale. So I'm going to start and I'm going to really pay attention to the shape. I like that curve. That's lovely. And right here about mid back, I'm going to put up a nice little fin. Because what we have here is a wild whale. Mm. And wild whales have fins that are upright. Do they? Yep. Only whales in captivity whose fins flop over. <laughs> a little thunder. Well, that's why we bumped alive. <laughs> well, it was it was shaking the camera and the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> was it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and just start painting that in, so I know where that is, right? You can use the traceable, you know, to get any of these elements in, you're not comfortable freehanding, right? Because that can be really scary to freehand stuff in. I don't mind so much. Alrighty, I like it. <laughs> now he's got a little friend. I'm going to bring that little nose forward. This is 
probably a, a baby or a young relative in the pod. There we go. Look at this go. We're just brushing that back. We're loving our time. And I've got my little chalk in, so I'm not that, I don't feel that stressed about the overall process. I can always like put a little white on my brush if I want to, if I want to separate the two of them. Just to remind myself where those separations are. Look at that. I just want to say, you're not the same as that. Easy to do, even at this stage. Little belly here. And then we're going to have a little fin that comes out. I love the little fins. Fin. And I'm going to say this fin in the reference is a little bit awkward, but I would say that's a Photoshop problem. So I'm probably going to put that fin a little bit back and tuck. And I'll shade it to show it as a separate fin. And then we're going to come back here and say that. So. If I need to see it against the black, I can always grab a little bit of my white. Because what am I doing right now? I'm sketching with paint. But again, you can use the transfer method. You can trace these on. I'm going to narrow here to the tail. And again, what am I doing? I am just painting in my two little whale friends. Little whale buddy. Little whale buddy. <laughs> Boy, thunder. Now, I don't really worry about the tail because I've got a bunch of landscape there that I'm going to be putting in. I love my thunder camera. You, you love, love your thunder camera? Yeah. Is it it's, like a thunder cat? Well, it's that particular camera is mounted on the end of a beam. So that beam is definitely picking up the vibration from thunder more than anything else is. So it's kind of cool whenever a thunder hits, it shakes. And you can see now why I wasn't that worried about doing the tail at this stage, because I've got to paint this, this little kind of distant, calm, tropical landscape space. I didn't put any lights or buildings here. Because in this one, I didn't want to. I didn't want it to seem like people were living here. I like to make these little lines sort of up and down, and the reason for that is, is it helps me even as I'm building the trees to remember that the landscape will be a little bit up and down. That makes sense. There really isn't a right or wrong way to do it, you know. But you do want to have some unusual and uneven flows. So that it feels like the natural rise and drop of land. So we've got that right there. I'm going to wipe out my brush. And I might, just while it's a little bit drier, come here. And I'm going to brush up lightly this distant line. I am twirling. I don't know if you can see. I'm going to get back. I'm Twirling the brush a little bit, I move its directionality. I'm just trying to make sure that that distant landscape isn't smooth. I want it to be a natural landscape. Just trying to track your hand there a little bit so they can see how you use the. Uh... No, yeah, I want you to do that. Track my hand and I'm a little bush up. So that's what I'm doing is I'm trying to make these little distant sense of and see how it lets the purple kind of peek through and that starts to inform that these are these are little plant-like spaces it's a tropical space it's a tropical space before i ever even tried a palm tree you know so i can take this up like we have and maybe something right there that's a little Y. And I'm going to just lightly pull out a little palm front. I see. You make a little palm. Little palm fronds. Thingies. Yeah. See that? I'll have a little palm frond. Little palm fronty shapes are always fun. That's a nice little palm frond. So 
They're fun. Hmm. I like them. Likes to make them. And it's really just about these lines with these wonderful rough shapes. And then a nice little run of rough shapes. It's very nice. And you get those and have a little friend right here going, oh. There we go. That's palmy. Rough kind of upward little stroke. Maybe that has a bit more structure to it, right? Hmm. And up top here, we've got a very little rough cluster. A couple of cluster of palms that have clustered together, but maybe that one is out a little bit. Yeah, a little out a little bit. <laughs> I love doing the outs a little bit. Hey, don't go with my friends. I do my own thing, palm. Some down palms. Look at that, little down palms. That's just like this crazy little palm tree that's having a little palm moment. His little friend could be here. It's nice. I like that little. He's got a little friend that's maybe seen a little storm. There we go. Now, I don't actually want to move these necessarily through here um, because I really like the pop of sun. So the next one I might do, maybe I'll do this one right here where I'm like, like this, and then I do a little like that, and like that, and like that, and like that. And so then I can just be like, little palm frond. What do you have? Another little palm frond. You can see it's like a push and pull where I take it out. And then, woo! Now we have this whole gorgeous, distant, yo, that's awesome. Right? Yeah, I like it. I can take a little of my phthalo blue and I can come here and start to talk a bit about what's going on in the distance. Uh, Making kind of some rough, rough little sea thoughts. Get a little purple into it. Used to be deeper little sea thoughts. I like the little oceans you make here. This is actually, I really, really like this painting quite a lot. Thank you. I really favorites. wanted to do this painting quite a lot. Sometimes I'll build stuff in digital space that I want to paint because there's not really a reference for this moment. <laughs> I don't really have that as a reference in real time. So it's nice to be able to make things. That's one of the great, wonderful parts of being an artist. I'm gonna take a little bit of my alizarin and a small amount of my deluxezine purple, and I'll grab my zinc. Oh, I wish there was more quinacridone, but you know what? I have a tube of it. <laughs> so what happens when I run out? I add more <laughs> wherever I need to. You could also use quinacridone reds for this in through a painting like this, and they would do just fine. I'm going to come here, and I'm going to start to kind of brush a little bit of that really pinker color through here. See how we're doing? Yeah, A little I do. bit of that reflection in the water. It's not huge, but it's nice, but it's lovely. It's good to have some lovely bits. Lovely bits. Gives it some dimensionality, some play. A little bit of my green, a little bit of my blue. Making that phthalo turquoise, get a good bit of my white. And start to turn up my water. And what I'm doing here is much similarly to everything else. I'm just trying to create those ripples and reflections and little moments that we have 
because the whales are jumping. Right? Get a little more white on there. When, when we're jumping, when whales are jumping, you can't really expect the water to be so still. So back into my blue maybe with a little bit of white. And I'm going to come back here. Now take your painting in. You know what's happening. Let the water, let the water start to move and ripple and and change. Thalo turquoise on there. A lot of white, maybe. Let this sort of happen right here. See how we're making that sea be very rough, but still quite calm. It's only rough because our little fellows here are breaking up the surface. Now I'm also going to grab a little bit of this light color. I'm going to get a little pink in it, but I just want a very light color. And I'm going to talk a little bit about a reflection there. I just added some pink. You can see what I mean? Just a little spot of maybe the moon, right? Kind of catching some light there. That happened. We're going to have a big splash. We don't have to be too worried about any of it. Our fellow in the back. Come back with another little coat of black. Just to make sure we are good. You want the black to be quite rich before you start to add all the wonderful other colors that we're going to be adding. I'm going to get some more white out. I have a giant tube of it, so I won't be out. How you doing, babe? I just realized, like, I get to doing painting and yeah, no, I'm just get my hair in front of it. And... You're doing great. We're just sort of cruising along. This has been a really great video. I like it. Real pretty when it's all done. Yeah. Just real happy, real pretty, real chill. Real it's happy, so real funny. Pretty, real chill. Thunder causes that little shaky, shaky over there. All right, let's. We're making some nice lighter gray, and we're gonna come at the top of our little friend here. The water, as it's going to come off of him and hit this light, it's going to make this, let's add that to the back of the fin, interestingly enough, because where's the moon? Right there. And even like right here, like where I'm going to shade it to show that there's a fin kind of tucked in, I come right there the outside edge. Just the start of that. I'm blending here between the black and that gray a little bit. Soften that. Starting to think about things where shadows are, things where highlights are. That would be a place where we'll pause right now. So we're going to keep refining the lights and darks. I got myself some clean water. 
Got myself some nice clean water so that I can keep working and I have lots of clarity with what I'm doing. I'm just going to keep pushing those values because that's how, how I'm going to get to that very, very wet look that I'm, I'm hoping to achieve. Right, yeah. It's going to be all about the reflection. All about them. There we go. Just enjoy his little belt. He's so cute. Yeah. Not cute if you're a penguin. And it's okay if you're a penguin and you don't feel orcas are cute. It's all about perspective. Right? If you're the gazelle, you're not like, oh, look at the majesty of the lion. You're like, yo, lion, true. not okay. <laughs> like, I was looking at the octopus another, the other day because we were watching, uh, was it Brave Wilderness? I think it was Brave Wilderness on YouTube. A good kids show of the yeah. kids shows that are out there. It's a fantastic, wonderful program. I'm so glad they're going mainstream. Um, but we were watching it and I was just thinking about, you know, as charmed and, and cute and wonderful as we all think that octopus is, when you think about how they eat anything in the ocean, they are scary as all get out. It's perspective, right? If you're oh, a crustacean yeah. and you see one of those coming, you're not like, isn't it cute? You're like, run away. <laughs> doesn't make the octopus bad. It just means that sometimes things have a point of view. <laughs> a yep. Weird weird it's true. series of thoughts that i'm having having on father's day so i'm going to bring a little bit more like of the highlight here to the top of him where we're talking about you know this wonderful blend and you can see i'm doing that thing with the corner of the brush again you know i like to work the corner of that brush understanding your tools and how they work can really 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 help you not have to maybe buy 10 more things it's just like oh yeah i can blend with that brush i just use the corner oh i can get a cloud with that brush i just i just use it like this and then boom you have it all right so there you go just starting to starting that shading process that valuation process Getting a little more white on here I don't want there to be any mistake that any of those spots are functionally white. And the reason for that is, is because we do have white spots on this animal that we have to talk about. Here, Twig. All right, let's bring that tail down a little bit. A little bit of that there. And uh, maybe a little bit up here. There we go. Get that nice sort of flipper. They've got, you know, some very distinctive shapes for some very important reasons to their survival and their well-being. It's true. They do. And on the corner of my brush, I'm starting to work on that. Now there's a, there's a bit of a white marking here. I'm going to come back and talk about a good bit. Right now, I just want to start to get this slightly lighter value in. So again, using the corner of my brush, bring that down, blending that. Where he's going to seem super wet is when I get the high reflections and high, uh, really, really exaggerated um, low lights in. So like we know that like coming underneath here up into the fin is a white marking and then right here you have another little white marking then and then one that will be right here hmm. just thinking about those coming here And if I need to blend at those edges, like if my black got dry, I can always come back with black, can I? 
So even if you lost your wet edges, what can you always do? So always come back with the black. It's doing pretty good. Let's get our basic shading going on our second little whale pretty soon here. And then we're going to put these highlights in these white spots. And then we're going to have real fast work it. Like out of the blue. You're going to be like, where'd that ochre work it come from? And be like, oh, it was there all along in you. I like that. He was always in you. <laughs> that would also not be a happy story out at sea. So I have to say, like, one of the coolest things I ever saw was that uh, planet show Spider had us watching with the false killers and the dolphins having, like, that meetup. Oh. And they have, like, the meetup party where they're like, yo, where you been? I missed you. Like, they know each other. Like, they mm -hmm. have individual friends within those little pods. It's so cool. These animals really deserve our love and respect. Yeah. And need it. And need it. We need, they need us to see them as deserving of that. I'm going to make sure his little marking is marked out there so I know where that is. Go back with them. Maybe soft little blend right here and I'll come back with some of my dark color to blend that in so that we can get the high highlights going. I came back with some black in the corner of my brush, blending in. There you go. I know I'm going to come back with some highlights here. Just refining those shapes. I love doing them. It's like one of my favorite things. Hmm. Now I'm going to get one of my number four rounds if I was smart and washed one. And I'm going to get a little of my blue into my brush. I'm going to go ahead and get some white and a little black. So it it's going to be sort of that white, blue, and black color if you guys can see that. I need more water because it's not flowing. So that's how I improve the flow. Get back here and out of the way the camera and try to follow that. Had a bit of a boo boo there, but it's super fixable. I'm not too worried at this stage. And we're going to make that wonderful sort of like what is often considered like the eye, but isn't the eye. And a pod color. It is the I scare you with my eye shaped eye thing on the side of my head. Like you have to wonder what predator was eating them that they did that for. Maybe for their when they're little. Maybe. Because, you know, you, when you're little, you need to look scarier. Because when you're big, you're just big. That's right. Little lion cub, not that scary. Big lion cub, super scary. So, little lion cub probably needs all that fur. So, he's like, looks big to all the other things that are on the plane. They're out there that think they might want to taste them a lion. Maybe. I'm, you know. So, just bringing that up here, coming around the front. As I nice speculate. Little. On biology. So this kind of blue gray white color is actually the shadow value of the white that we're going to be doing. And that's going to be really nice because it's really going to help us establish that shape is still applicable even within the marking. Which would be a place we could easily lose it, right? And then we're going to come right here. Up the tail a little bit.
There we go. Starting to have a headway. Rinsing out quite well. And now I'm going to get into my fluid white. And I'm going to come here. Add that bright, bright white. Who's got bright white? Who's got bright white? Off the back of the dorsal fin, kind of around a little bit. You're definitely going to want to add a highlight because where's the mint? couple places on him I'm going to add the little wet spot little spots of high reflection water so this very particular skin and it and it holds water in a really specific way when they jump Definitely want to paint that because that'll help them so gorgeous and so shiny. Now, wherever I've got to fix uh, the darker value, I can always come back in with my brush and a little bit of water and the dark paint. It's like I had a little issue with the fin, so I can come back here to the fin and make sure that the front of the fin is dark before I get back into the back of the fin. Oh, there's the fin. We can see that hidden fin now can't we and I may want to take I just rinsed out and changing colors a little bit I may want to add some of this to this this spot right here and once again sure that that is highlighted forward Come up here and make sure we're showing that shadow at the belly, but still that white marking, there's just a shadow at the belly. Little water reflection on the fin. Needs a little eye patch. That's nice. Got another little one right here. There we go. He's looking more orca, orca by the minute, isn't he? Yeah. Just this back part of this patch, but I don't want to do all of it because I want some of it to still be in shadow. And then a similar, similar thing is going to happen with him with, uh, with the water. Just tapping the brush. See, I'm just making these little highlights of splash. Me night one nice one that's coming down this little part of his little ridge back. Still coming off here. And see the if you can see it, there's this little wiggle to my brush that's showcasing that effect. I 
Oops, too much paint. And blend that a little bit. I want a few little warm white spots, but not totally. And then back down here. What I gotta do when I get that in, I've gotta come back with some black, some clear black. So I'm gonna get some clear black. Making sure that that's nice and clean. And then you may want to come back with just a couple little dark spots up here just to increase that feeling that maybe your shine. They're looking pretty happy, aren't they? I like it. They're all shiny, shiny, because they've been jumping. Jumping. They've been jumping. They were... They're frolicking. They're frolicking. They're happy. Mm -hmm. They're happy where they are. Nobody's giving them no grief. Nobody's hunting them. Whatever. They got foods. Whatever foods they want, they got. Things be good. Yeah. There we go. Two little jumpy whales. Now, two little jumpy whales don't work unless there's something that they're jumping out of. So I'm going to take a little bit of my phthalo green and my phthalo blue. I'm going to mix them together to make my turquoise. And I'm going to come underneath here. And I'm going to make this a little bit darker. You got me there. I was a little wrong camera. If I need to, I'll grab some dark purple and I'll also deepen this. And then I'm going to take some of these dark values. And can you see I'm just pushing and making this explosive little shape with my brush? We want there to be energy on this. Yeah. It's not a small thing that's happening. Rinse, 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 rinse. Now. I'm going to get my brush and get it wet. Everything here is still pretty wet. And I'm going to begin to highlight parts of the splash. I'm going to come and make this like a layer of splash. That certainly got a layer, doesn't it? Everything's still wet, so it's still pretty doable. Haven't taken out all the dark value, though. Just really roughed it in, right? Now more white. Tapping the top of what would be some of these crazy, more expressive splash shapes. Who's got a splash? That's pretty good.
He's just pushing that brush. It's a rough brush. I'm finding bits and I'm highlighting the top. Oh, we've got the beginnings of a splash. Back into my phthalo blue. Add some deep value. You lost some. You know what I'm doing? Yeah. Now, the next part is going to be pretty great. Um, I've got to get a little bit of control over it and I do want it to work a little bit up here, but I'll have to be careful. So I could mask things off or I can take my clean water and I know I've got a clean brush so I can clean up as I go. I'm going to get yeah. my fluid paint out again and I'm going to pour out fresh, even though you see some, because it honestly splatters better fr fresh than not fresh. The freshest of splatters. By the way, we're almost done. When I come to this, I'm just making sure there's no big lumps. And I get real close to the canvas because I don't want it to go everywhere and I want to have control over where it is. Some of it can be on these little fellows because they're jumping. You can find this tool online. It, you look for the Art Sherpa Galaxy set, you can find it. Um, but again, I've got a whole video on different ways that you can do this. So don't feel like you, you're stuck now if you don't have this tool because you, you're not stuck. It's cool. It's a very cool tool. I won't lie to you. Yeah. But, you know. I'm just trying to disperse that splatter. Look at that starting to splatter. Pretty amazing now, isn't it? It really is. I right hear this control. That's why this is a big deal. Look at those splashes that I had control over. I love to be me. Okay. Yeah. I think that is pretty spectacular. Let's sort of look around it for a second. Give a look, because this is a good time to look for anything and be like, what do we need? What do we need? You know, is anything bothering me? Is there anything about it that I don't like? If you feel like you got there, then you can just take your signature brush. And put your maker's mark on. Because you did it. You finished this up really fast. I wasn't I, even expecting I really thought that. it was going to be like three hours. but Yeah, it wasn't even. It wasn't. So easier than I expected it to be, honestly. Sort of like the dolphins. They, remember they were just easier than I expected? They really were. Okay, let's turn around and take a look at it. <gasps> I love it when the painting's better than the digital photo reference. <laughs> Always my favorite. In any anything that I've got going on. I love their splash. I love their energy. It's kind of a magic, tropical moment, fantasy moment that we really wish our natural world had. So it's great how as artists we can create those spaces for ourselves through our art. Even if they don't maybe live in the real world, we can make them real for ourselves. Listen, I anyone who does this, I think you're really brave. I think you're really awesome. Please share your finished results with John and I. We've got a Facebook group you can drop them. The video page where the traceable and all the extra information was. You can uh, leave a comment in a video there. Definitely tell us in the comments below what you thought. If you haven't already, do subscribe to the channel so you can know when new awesome free art lessons like this are coming up. Because this is how we roll craziness every week. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at the easel really soon. Bye. -bye.